I'll go first since Pete's the talker. I'll be sh short and brief. But my name's Sean Kelly. I'm the range field specialist <laughs> with uh, SDSU Extension. I'm also vice chairman and extension liaison with the Mid Missouri River Prescribed Burn Association. Um, so we're really happy to be here to finally have South Dakota be a part of this and uh, give the first ever update for South Dakota PBAs. Um, in <clears throat> 2015, a group of ranchers and landowners in the south central part of the state decided something needed to be done about the severe amount of cedar encroachment on the ranches. And so from that was born the Mid-Missouri River Prescribed Burn Association in uh, 2015. Um, it's the first landowner-driven, rancher-driven, and led um, PBA in South Dakota. Uh, we had our first prescribed burn in 2015 um, with the help and assistance of our neighboring PBA in uh, Boyd County, Nebraska. Uh, forever grateful to those guys for coming up and helping us and showing us how to pull off a successful burn in the pretty rough country in the river breaks. So our PBA, it covers a four county area in the south central part of the state on both sides of the Missouri River and it's mainly to control cedar tree encroachment. Um, we've had successful burn seasons in 16, 17, and 18 of about 1,000 acres to 3,000 acres. Uh, 2019 and 2020, we were kind of hampered by weather and COVID so we didn't get much done. We got back rolling again in 2021 and it's, the interest continues to grow. Uh, we have an upwards of 15 to 20,000 acres per year planned for burning in 23 and 24 along the Missouri River. And uh, just forever grateful for uh, the partners in South Dakota, South Dakota NRCS, South Dakota State University, South Dakota Game Fish and Parks have been behind us and, want, and supporting the Burn Association 100%. And, it's been great, and the interest continues to grow. Pete? Thanks, Sean. Uh, Cody said we're from the tropical Dakota, and I think it's really cool that you can go to a conference and burn your co-presenter, and it's totally acceptable, so appreciate that. Um, I guess, you know, I was reflecting on uh, this update, and it is just an update, but um, I hadn't really th thought about sharing too much, but one thing that is significant to share is um, I've been working in fire in South Dakota since 1998, and you know, you think of a long, a long haul. You know, that's 24 years. And so, what I'm really proud of in the last few years is the fact that we've got a functioning and and long-term. What I mean, what's a, a PBA that's really set up for the long haul? We've tried some various things. Some of the people in the room here, Sandy Smart, Cody Gruing, who just represented. We tried doing a lot of different things on private lands over the years, including uh, through the Nature Conservancy of a, a private lands. Um, service, you know, that we ran through the conservancy. Uh, uh, and it was a good model. It was a good thing to get fire off the ground. But until we had really the PBA model in the state, um, it's just always lacked something. So kind of the update now in South Dakota, uh, Sean mentioned many of the partners. Um, but we've, uh, under the, the umbrella of the South Dakota Grassland Coalition, organizations like South Dakota NRCS um, in particular, Game Fishing Parks, um, Audubon, Nature Conservancy, SDSU. Uh, collectively, we've worked really well together over the years, and we, we've done a lot of classroom-based uh, landowner trainings, and only in the last two years have we decided to, you know, what I th think kind of boldly step out and basically say, you know, it's not enough. We're gonna do hands-on landowner prescribed fire training, and we kind of almost had to dare the naysayers to say kind of, you know, try stopping us because we, we didn't do it for so many years because of the fear of breaking some kind of rule here or there, you know, NWCG or whatever it might be. But in reality, it's been really successful and we've got, we've got agency staff and landowners now sharing space in our prescribed fire training classes and uh, I'm really excited about that. So I think uh, that's going to continue. Um, I'm not sure what else we got really big to report, uh, other than there's some grants and some more research coming on cedar control in South Dakota, but I think that's about it.